It's a bull. <clears throat> Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals for our weekend uh, or our week update, wrap up, I guess I should say, on Friday. Uh, who am I? I'm Brian Kuzmar. I just told you that. And I am a, uh, a precious metals deal dealer here in South Florida and a rare coin dealer in South Florida since uh, 1977. Started working for my family business. And I've uh, been in this particular location since 1995. Uh, I've got a lot of experience in buying and selling wholesale and retail uh, gold bars and silver bars and coins and such. Uh, so uh, I have good uh, knowledge in this. Um, Anyways, if you know me, I open up every morning with these, uh, uh, usually the uh, pier cam in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea, which is right down the street from us, or uh, local live cams here in South Florida. Uh, once in a while, I'll use the coral cam down in Miami, and uh, this is actually one of my favorite cams. It's a Deerfield Beach live cam. You can watch it on YouTube. I can sit here for an hour just watching all the, I, of course, I'm a fisherman and I love the water as well, uh, but uh, uh, I could sit here for hours and just watch the different fish. It's very, very mesmerizing at times. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, though, if you get a chance to uh, bookmark this particular live page. Uh, one of the more beautiful uh, uh, live cameras in South Florida uh, that we have, and South Florida is a beautiful place. Um, however, before I get into the show we're going to talk about, and uh, uh, silver, I'm going to go into silver a little bit. Uh, I'd like to point out the kind of one of the things that you notice here with the behavior of fish is uh, that they like to sit in large groups like that. And there's some parallels to people when you think about this. These are schools of people. Well, what's what's the What's good about schools? Well, schools provide, uh, in large groups, provide comfort. You don't stand out in the crowd. Uh, they provide security against predators. Um, and, you know, it's funny because humans are a little bit like this, too, when it comes to investing. Uh, think about, most people like to invest in large, they like to follow the crowd. And uh, let's not, this is kind of, you can call these schools right here that we're looking at. You see, these are pilchers, actually, if you're not a fisherman. They're, we call them bait fish down here, but they, they're large schooling fish. And they're usually about uh, anywhere from three inches to five or, you know, five inches long. They're not that big. Uh, but they school in large, large groups, tens of thousands of them <clears throat> in these groups. And the reason they do that is for two reasons, fear or greed. Uh, they do it, number one, because they're looking for food. So they, I guess they figure that if the group, you know, if... If a bunch of them find food, they all benefit from that. So there's some there's some uh, benefit from being in groups like that, and that's the greed part of it. Oh, I'm going to follow that group over there. Like uh, it looks like they're making money. You can say the same thing about when it comes to investing. Uh, people like to follow large crowds, crowds more or less. Uh, schools, whatever you want to call it. And then there's also the fear factor. People feel safer when they're following the crowd. They feel safer in large groups. And uh, they f who do they feel safer from? Well, they feel safer from predators. Uh, and they also feel like the uh, the group is going to benefit them somehow in, in food. Uh, and that's how fish look at it. And humans are kind of like that too. Uh, there's safety in numbers with us. We like to follow the crowd. A lot of us do. Of course, there are the whales and the sharks out there. <laughs> and and uh, in I'm talking about in the ocean right here. But there's also whales and sharks out in the uh, economic world, and uh, whales and shark eat. Uh, uh, they eat the uh, small fish like this in schools, and and again, the the benefit of being uh, in in these large schools is that. Uh, uh, there's safety involved. Uh, but sometimes when there's safety, you can also be corralled into, you know, a lot of like dolphins will corral these fish into an area and then just start eating nonstop. Uh, so, you know, there is safety in numbers, but you can also be corralled into a group and uh, be let off a cliff. And uh, we see that a lot of with investments and a lot of different things. Uh, anyway, I hope you don't mind my little analogy there. Kind of weird, but uh, I did it. <laughs> so, uh, let's see what we got going on here. Okay, there's my little, uh, of course I had to play this. <laughs> All right, some of you might remember that, but, uh, uh, you know, the, I see people out there giving silver, you know, oh, it hasn't gone up this year, and uh, we haven't, I haven't doubled up, I haven't tripled up, and it's usually uh, the, the more younger and the patient people, uh, or maybe some of the people that got into silver thinking they were going to get rich like GameStop, uh, but that's not quite how it works. You don't get rich off this stuff, really. Uh, it's a great preservation of wealth, and you can make quite a bit of money, but if you're in the, uh, if you're in the gold and silver market to get rich, then you're certainly in the, uh, uh, the wrong market, unless you know how to have 
heavily leverage yourself. And then there's a lot of risk that comes with it. The uh, type of gold and silver uh, uh, purchases uh, that I talk about on a daily basis and that I recommend are, are more about preservation of wealth and making sure that you know, it, it, if, the, if the shit hits the fan, that you're probably going to be okay. And uh, again, uh, it's a good hedge against uh, fallen currencies. And current, you know, gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years plus. It's never been bankrupt or it's never going to go bankrupt. You'll never wake up in the morning and hear on CNBC that uh, uh, gold filed Chapter 7 or silver filed Chapter 7. Um, but I digress on that right here. What I really wanted to talk about is uh, how well silver has performed last year. Um, there are some people out there saying, eh, you know, it hasn't done it. Uh, again, uh, uh, that's just uh, impatience uh, by uh, uh, naive people uh, that, that believe that they were going to uh, do a double up or a triple up anytime soon. I mean, it could happen and it's eventually going to happen. And once we get into bubble territory, that's when you'll start to see uh, all the greedy people get in it. Uh, the, the greedy little fish, the, the crowd will move there or should I say the school will move into that uh, uh, territory uh, once it gets in the bubble territory meanwhile the school is out there doing what they're being corralled into doing which is uh, buying equity stocks uh, and some other things um, let's move along to spot prices here and uh, I'll keep this show fairly short today if I can not a lot to talk about in the news as well um, <clears throat> what are overnight I'm gonna do a quick refresh this is what it was about uh, 20 minutes ago or so uh, let's see here, 8.28, what time is it right now? Uh, okay, oh no, that's 8.28, really? Uh, so it's been a while since I refreshed this. So let's refresh this real quick here and see what the most current price is. Uh, 18.85 down a little bit, but here's the strange thing, silver. Speaking of high ho silver, uh, take a look at this. Uh, uh, silver's up 17 cents, gold is down uh, uh, 13 bucks. Kind of odd. Uh, you know, again, we talked about psychological numbers the other day, and it appears like silver's kind of breaking the psychological uh, number. It, I don't think 28's a psychological number again. I, I, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm kind of calling $30 silver the, right now the psychological number, although really uh, that's a number we've broken uh, many times in the past, and we've been in the $30 range, so it's not an unknown psychological level. The unknown psychological level for, level for silver is 50 bucks. Uh, we've never been beyond that point for silver. And I guess for gold, you can say 2100. So these are really just psychological stopping points, 28, 30, uh, that kind of thing. Once we get up in that $50 territory, then we're in unknown territory. Uh, so we'll see what happens then when we get there. Uh, same thing with gold. Uh, we're just in territory we've been in many times over back and forth. Uh, so uh, th these are just like psychological resting points or stopping points, uh, whatever you want to call them. And again, I did a show this week on uh, psychological numbers. And really, that's what they are. People just set things at even numbers. Um, and let's see the range last night. Uh, we were up at 1903. I think that was uh, earlier in the evening or later in the day yesterday. Uh, uh, we were at 1900. I think overnight markets kind of got the uh, crap kicked out of them just a tiny bit. Again, what does that do? Provides you an opportunity to buy the what? Buy the dips. <laughs> so buy the what? <laughs> uh, silver, uh, 2818 currently in there. And here's really kind of interesting. Uh, we've got a down day in gold and, and both of the uh, white metals, silver and uh, platinum, are up somewhat. Uh, but again, no correlation between silver and platinum, in my opinion, other than the fact when, when uh, usually all three metals, when gold moves up, the other two metals uh, move up with it generally. Uh, silver ranges last night 27.98 to 28.30. So silver really uh, is doing quite well for the folks out there that were complaining. Uh, it hasn't done anything. Uh, patience, my friend. Patience. Um, and again, look, we're we're we busted through the 28. So 28 really wasn't a psychological mark. Uh, psychological number. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to say tw uh, $30 is. That's where you're going to see most of the resistance at 30 bucks. Because uh, I kind of think we pretty much busted this 28 uh, level point. We busted 30 plenty of times, but the next level I think is 30 bucks. The next level is going to hover around a little bit. Uh, we're going to touch that 30. And again, same thing I did with 28 here for a while. Uh, gold, the same thing. Uh, it's down 15 bucks, but more or less we've been in the $1,900 level. Uh, but it just seems not to want to close and stay there above that psychological known 1900 level. But we will. There's no doubt about it. For any of you folks out there that have any doubt in your mind whatsoever that the prices are going to be much higher than this here in the future, and more than likely in the near future, uh, rest assured, uh, relax, 
Don't panic. Put your medals away. You're going to see down days. If you can buy the down days, buy it. Sorry about that. Just That's the microphone too, folks. I'm getting accused of other things. Ready? There. <laughs> it's got rubber feet, and it makes a weird noise when you move it. So <laughs> a little conspiracy going on, what that noise really is. Um, but anyways, um, uh, so, you know, if, if, you're, if you're new to buying precious metals and you've only been doing it for a couple years and you still find yourself looking at the markets every day when it goes down, you're, you get all nervous. Should I sell? Should I sell? Is it going to stop going up? Uh, get over it. It's, it's just it, 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 relax. You have nothing to worry about. Uh, in, in the long term, gold is, and silver is just going to continue to go up and up and up. There's a lot of choppiness along the way. Uh, however, if you plan on living more than a few years, uh, stop worrying. Uh, just keep stacking gold and silver and you'll be fine. Uh, now, does that mean put all your money in gold and silver? Absolutely not. I'm not a financial advisor. However, I can tell you um, you know that you should have a certain amount of money in some kind of tangible hard asset that you can physically hold in your hands or you know where it's at. Uh, don't give it to anyone else and don't let other people store your stuff. Uh, that incurs third party risk. And uh, when I say that, I say that includes uh, family members, uh, uh, anybody. You know, if something happened, if you gave all your gold and silver to your mother and your mother says, I'll take care of it, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> um, no problem. Uh, and then she hides it somewhere and something happens to her. Um, God forbid, um, uh, you know, that's third party risk. So even, you know, people that you trust, uh, uh, you know, try to keep a good hand on it. And uh, uh, if you do hide it somewhere, again, if you have if you have metals at home, I don't even like keeping in a safe deposit box. I'm not even sure if it's legal to, but uh, uh, I prefer, again, keep it in your possession, in your home. Uh, hidden well in a great safe, floor safes. I don't like gun safes, they suck. Uh, or, or bury it in your yard or bury it. But make sure you tell someone else that you trust where it's at in case something happens to you. Uh, but meanwhile, um, you know, the whole purpose of owning coins and bars is that you own them, that you physically have them yourself. Uh, well, I digressed into that too, and we're here to talk about silver. I keep saying I'm going to make these short shows, and then I just go off. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, range is here. Let's take a look at platinum uh, again. I, I love platinum. I think it's a great metal. I think it's super cheap. Don't know quite what moves it other than some industry stuff, but uh, uh, this sub 1200 level I think is really cheap, and uh, we'll see higher prices again. Uh, but my my real specialty is in gold and silver. Although I've, I've dealt in enough platinum to know uh, uh, to know enough to be dangerous. Uh, palladium is a metal I don't talk about much because I get very few calls on it. Uh, but it looks like uh, the coin said we're going to have a bull market today. I, I guess I should have asked the coin which one, in gold or silver? <laughs> we usually assume they go up together, but there has been some kind of separation. Uh, I have seen this happening here uh, the last uh, several months where gold goes up and silver goes down or vice versa. And the same thing with platinum has been on its own anyway. It just kind of seems to do what it wants to do. Uh, but any, uh, any big moves in gold, usually any sustained good moves in gold upward, are always going to bring up the other two metals. I mean, it's just the way it's always happened and probably will continue to happen until it doesn't. <laughs> so uh, let's move into some news here real quick. Uh, GATA. Let me talk about Z uh, Zero Hedge because there's a couple of good GATA articles. And again, you've probably read them before I do. If you watch my show, you you know I tell you that the GATA.org has to be on your bookmark or otherwise you really don't know what's going on out there. Um, let me take a look at headlines. Not too much again in gold and silver, so we won't kind of uh, dilly-dally here too much. Uh, is gold still a safe haven asset? Well, I'm not even going to click that article. Of course it is. Uh, that's like a clickbait. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, uh, title. Uh, but the problem with the titles nowadays, if you want people to read your stuff or listen to your videos, you got to grab their attention. Uh, that's the one thing I don't like about YouTube, by the way. And again, I digress. Uh, not too much. Not too much good in news, but nothing here really that I think that uh, futures extend record highs as inflation fears fade. Uh, I'm not going to read this, uh, but on the other hand, it, it just, uh, inflation fears fade. Who, who the hell uh, uh, thinks inflation fears have faded? I'm, I'm almost tempted to click it, but uh, uh, folks, inflation fears have not faded at all. Uh, again, that's the, uh, that's the whales and the uh, sharks out there trying to maneuver the uh, schools into believing that there's not going to be big uh, inflation fears. And uh, I'm going to keep using this uh, ocean fish analogy here. <laughs> I'm going to beat this one to death. Uh, Biden and Bojo, who cares? Uh, let the apes have Wall Street. I like that. Uh, Taibi, I think his name is. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I like his stuff. He does some good. Uh, they're talking about uh, meme stocks and things. But then this is out of our uh, uh, deal here. 
Uh, container ship orders surge as firms race to add capacity. Again, part of the uh, issue that we're going to see with uh, some inflation here is just lack of product, lack of goods, but ultimately, uh, uh, or uh, 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 delivery times too getting hung up. Uh, but uh, uh, we've definitely got inflation going on here. This is interesting. France's Macron, M Macron um, is that how you pronounce it? Macron urges G7 to sell gold reserves to fund bailout uh, for Africa. You see what happens when you read news but you never watch it. I haven't watched uh, corporate television. Uh, I haven't watched corporate TV since 2008, believe it or not. So I don't know how to pronounce some of these people's names. I read them all the time, but I never hear them pronounced. My apology. Uh, to, uh, urges G7 to sell gold reserves to fund the bailout for Africa. What WTF, I'm going to just say on that one. Um, what, what, what is he He wants other countries to sell their gold reserves to fund a bailout for Africa. You know why Africa is in so much trouble? It's because of Marxism and communism. That's why they're in so much trouble. They spent their way into Bolivia, and they've actually they've got a, a system there that just uh, uh, can't be successful. Uh, again, I digress, but you know this is the stupid, uh, t typical stupidity of uh, uh, most governments, uh, politicians, and uh, economy people. You know, hey, why don't we uh, take people, you know, you, you know, like the 2008 crisis, for example. Uh, what caused that? What caused that was stupidity. Stupid banks, stupid people running banks, taking too much risk, too much greed, uh, all that bad stuff. Um, and these companies were uh, going to go bankrupt because of it in 2008. And what did we do? Instead of letting them go bankrupt and let other smart companies buy up their assets, uh, that were doing well and, and become better companies, we bailed out these friggin' idiots. Uh, and this is what uh, uh, he's talking about. He's taking our gold to bail out the same idiots that destroyed their whole country the, the first time around. I'm sorry. Uh, that's just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> you can see. Good thing I don't do a political show. Ooh. Uh, again, not too much here to talk about as far as uh, precious metals. I'm going to skip out of here because... As you can see, I can make a comment on every one of these articles. And again, I'm looking for articles that have more to do with what we're doing. Uh, there was a, uh, there is a uh, article on GH here uh, that I'm not even going to talk about too much. I'll show you who the author is, but um, what what it, it said, it's mentioned something about cryptos that I've mentioned many many times before. Not that the fact that governments and banks hate uh, uh, hate competition and they're not going to allow cryptos to compete against them. Uh, but the fact that uh, if, if you're, again, here, uh, this sums it up exactly the way I've uh, mentioned over the course of the year right here. Uh, if your savings medium needs continual support from Elon Musk so that it holds value, a mistake has been made. Also, savers need which, something which stands on its own without endorsement or enforcement. They need physical silver and gold. But more or less, it's true. If your savings and your investment relies on the support of Elon Musk or some other person, uh, individuals, uh, you're screwed, really, uh, in my opinion. Unless, you know, again, if you know how that game is played and you know that Elon's going to make a comment out there and you pull all your money out and, again, you know, all games are rigged. Even the, the crypto markets are rigged. Uh, gold and silver markets can be rigged and are rigged occasionally. Uh, so, and, you know, elections are rigged. Everything's rigged, it seems, out there. But if you know how the game is played and you know who the players are, then you can win. <clears throat> And casinos, when they spot you doing that, you, they usually kick you out of the casino. But in the economic markets, not so much. You know, uh, the Reddit Wall Street guys. If 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 Wall Street and uh, uh, the stock market, equities market, really was like uh, uh, a casino, uh, the Reddit Wall Street guys would have been kicked out of the casino a long time ago. So the fortunate part of economic markets is that. Uh, they allow you to, if you take the time and you learn who the players are, uh, you can bet against them and actually win, and they really can't kick you out of the markets. Uh, they can make you suffer some pain one day when they outmaneuver you, but uh, uh, here here nor there. Uh, again, how did I digress from that? I said I was going to make this a short show. Sorry about that. If your saving mediums need continuous support from anybody uh, so it holds value, you made a mistake, folks. And uh, again, I sincerely believe that. Well, let's go to GATA.org because they've got a couple good articles out there. Um, Congressman presses Treasury Secretary to disclose U.S. gold activities. It's kind of funny this article just came up because we were talking about this in yesterday's show about how uh, 
Uh, where is, you know, there's some gold that the uh, Treasury Department says they belong to the uh, Federal Reserve, uh, you know, the Central Bank. Uh, and where is this gold? That, you know, apparently the uh, Treasury has issued some kind of gold certificates of some sort uh, and loaned this gold out. This article talks uh, and says that it's about 5% uh, of, uh, of the uh, Treasury's gold that they loaned out to the Fed, but you know who knows? I mean, getting this information and data is very difficult, and that's what this congressman is trying to do here. He's trying to get them to disclose uh, the gold swaps between uh, a Treasury, our gold, you know, our gold, our, our as a people, as a nation, our gold that we uh, loaned out to the Fed uh, in some convoluted deal. Uh, where is it? That's the, that's the question he's asking. So I won't click that, but most of you probably already read it because, again, if, you, if you're watching my videos, you know that I require you. <laughs> not require. And I don't get paid by them either. Um, I, I request that you have this on your uh, uh, bookmark bar and that you read this at least once a week, the GATA.org site. Um, silver isn't a real market, but may, may become one soon. Turk and James Turk from King World News. James Turk is the permeable of this market. Uh, his enthusiasm is off the hook when it comes to precious metals. Uh, uh, James Turk was was talking about five thousand dollar gold ten years ago, so and he still is. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe that's not a fair assessment. But pretty good article here. Uh, he talks to King and notes the gap between the artificial prices of monetary metals in the future exchange and the much higher prices for real metal in hand. Uh, so you know he's got a little article, something worth reading. Again, I always like reading his stuff in, in King World. They're, uh, they're very enthusiastic about the market. Uh, global banking regulator urges toughest capital rules for crypto. And again, what have I said over and over uh, about crypto? Governments and banks hate competition. Uh, I think competition is great. I think uh, I think there should be a. Uh, I think the U.S. dollar should have competition in the form of gold and the, in the form of cryptos. For if, the, if that works for people, um, I think people should have choices. That's what freedom is all about: is having choices in what kind of money you can use. And unfortunately, central banks and governments have limited us to the type of money that we can use as legal tender. Uh, I think that's wrong. Uh, Ron Paul talked about that many years ago for for a long time. He talked about allowing competing uh, uh, currencies. You know, which means that you'd be allowed to pay bills in crypto or pay your tax bill in a crypto or, or pay your tax bill in gold, that there should be other competing currencies. Um, well, anyways, uh, again, I do a lot of digressing on this show, and I use that word a lot, so I'm going to try for a minute. I'm going to stop using digress here. Sorry about that. Uh, global banking uh, regulator urges toughest capital rules for crypto. Uh, again, good read on GATI.org. I recommend that you read this. Um, what were we going to talk about earlier? Uh, we were going to talk about uh, uh, high ho silver and what silver is doing. And, and again, um, uh, uh, a lot of people have been dissing silver here for a little while. Let me kind of go there. And that was yesterday's video. We'll talk about that and some uh, comments from yesterday's video. Uh, but as far as uh, silver goes, uh, it's done really well. Look at this morning's prices. I'm going to update this one more time. We busted through this $28 uh, dollar mark here, I think. Uh, and our yeah, 28, 24. Take a look at this again. The the two the two have kind of separated a little bit, and silver's taking a run on its own. Uh, so I think uh, uh, silver is still a great buy at, at these levels. I believe that we're going to bust past all these uh, psychological levels that we've already been past many times before. Uh, the real magic, uh, or the real question, I guess, is going to be what happens at fifty dollars per ounce. That's the real question. And for you folks that have been uh, lamenting and crying about silver not doing much this last year, stop your whining. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, what do you want? A continuous climb until it hits about two thousand? I mean, this is not crypto territory. <laughs> we're not. We're talking about a real market that's been around for a long, 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 long time uh, with a real product. Uh, so, uh, you know, just bide your time. You're going to do real well with uh, silver. I think uh, silver is a, a bargain at these prices. Uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, Brian, and I don't like to uh, uh, give specific... People ask me, Brian, what do you think is a better deal, gold or silver? Now, I'm not going to tell you what you should buy. I'm not an advisor. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, you know, I go from hero to zero real quick. Uh, but I can give you uh, what I do personally and what my personal thoughts are. For me... I like to mix it up between the two. I think gold has, uh, you know, gold has stability. Gold is money. Gold is, uh, you know, gold is the rich man money. Gold is the elite money. I mean, I don't think you're ever going to go wrong buying gold. And I feel the same thing with silver. But uh, as far as silver goes, I, a lot more choppiness. The uh, premiums really suck on it. Uh, however, I think that right now, historically, 
um, we stand a better chance of doubling up with silver than we do with gold. Now think about this. The all-time high in, in silver has been $50 an ounce in 1980, uh, which in reality, uh, based on uh, you know what, what those dollars would be worth today, uh, that would be probably three or $300 silver at least or something crazy, you know what I mean? Uh, again, $1980 bought a lot more than they do today. Uh, and we saw $50 silver again in 2012. So we've seen $50 highs twice. We, we've been through that up and down, up through 50, down, back down to, uh, you know, the lower levels where it was for a long time. And uh, uh, so we've already seen uh, uh, $50 twice. Uh, we haven't seen it a third time. However, gold has busted its high how many times? Uh, 1980, uh, 2012, and again in 2020 uh, for a third time where silver never made that uh, 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 run to bust its all-time high. So. If you ask yourself right now, could where do you can you see silver at thirty six hundred bucks an ounce, and do you, can you see silver at fifty? Which is more likely, do you think, to hit first, fifty dollars silver or thirty six hundred dollars gold? Uh, in my opinion, I think we're more likely to see, uh, 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 I'm sorry, fifty dollars silver. Uh, sooner than we're going to see $3,600 gold. That's my opinion. And that, you know, that insinuates a double up. And I believe we're going to see $3,600 gold at some point here in the future. Um, I, I'm kind of curious, too, what the gold and silver ratio is right now. Let me do my little Siri thing here. 1884.27 uh, divided by 28.24. That would be about 66.7234. So we're at 66.72 is the gold to silver ratio right now. So we're in the average ratio, nothing crazy there. Um, I believe that once we get into, you'll know that we're in bubble territory when that ratio gets down to 15 to 1 or 20 to 1. Uh, once we start getting into the, that ratio tightens up between gold and silver, in the past that's indicated we're in bubble territory with precious, market, uh, precious metals. Uh, but again, I don't see that happening anytime soon, and I think we're good. Uh, you know, good. I think you got a good opportunity to buy right now for a little time. Wow, man, I'm just blabbing today. Sorry about that. Uh, it is the weekend show, and you can't fast forward through me. So, uh, where am I going back to? Well, I'm going to kind of close this show up here a little bit. I'm going to, oh, hold on. I'm going to talk about yesterday's video. Uh, government officially resets the gold prices. Uh, let me see if I can answer a few comments here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, let me just do a uh, newest first, and I'll go down to the bottom here. And I'd like to thank all these folks here for watching. Uh, Robert, you're welcome here anytime you come by. Uh, hey, Zipper, Dr. E. Uh, they will not confiscate gold by coming to your house and making a turn. They will do it by taxing you when you sell it. Well, they already tax you when you sell it. I think gold and silver has uh, capital gains tax, which is pretty heavy. Um, if you want to realize any profits, you'll have to sell it. That's when they'll collect their share. Uh, doc, uh, thanks for watching, Dr. E. Uh, I have no reason to believe anything the federal government says about anything. So, hey, I joined the club, sir. I agree with you 100%. Thanks for watching. And uh, uh, Jim C. says, I know people don't want to buy online. And a few weeks ago, you told me to go to the next town if you don't like your local coin store. So I did some research how far the next town with the coin shop. Uh, you live out in the boonies, Jim, so you don't have much of a choice. You know, I guess you do have to buy online. But at some point, the, the problem is, Jim, you're going to have to sell the gold. And do you really want to put it in the mail and ship it back to those companies? Uh, and that's why I'm really heavy on that. You know, even if you're not going to consistently buy because the coin shop is too far, or the, your local dealer is too far away from you, uh, you're going to have to find someone eventually to sell this stuff to and, and develop a relationship. And even you, Jim, even if you're going to have to drive six hours to do it, find a, a developer relationship somewhere even if you visit the guy once a year <laughs> so uh, that's just my opinion thanks for watching Jim I appreciate it uh, new uh, uh, great video thank you sir I appreciate that as well and uh, Linda Quadland says what happens if the price is silver going to not price in dollars but some other currency they are Linda uh, actually uh, um, precious metals are priced all over the world in different type of currencies uh, you can go online and you can get gold priced in pounds you can get gold priced in one you can get gold priced in uh, pesos so uh, yeah, it does happen. We just don't see it here because we're on the dollar system here. Uh, Eric says was going to bring up the fart sound, but figured someone would. Yes, Art. Okay, just for you folks that think that um, that I've been eating too many beans before I start to show. Here, let me see if I can duplicate that sound. I know this is pretty childish, but uh, I keep seeing it count. Ready? There you go. That's it. It's the mic stand. So <laughs> I'm blaming it on the mic stand. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Molnar says, I may be a precious metal dealer, but I got bad treasures in my heart. Oh, 
Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Um, Subprecious language. Well, listen, you know, that's the beauty of the Internet is that you can find, uh, you know, I am what I am, <laughs> as Popeye used to say, and I'm not changing that anymore anytime soon. Uh, so, uh, and I do have some pretty good treasures as well. But thanks for watching anyway, Joseph. If you continue to watch, I don't think anyone's going to tell on you. Um, roll with it. It's 20 year stacker in Florida. Make sure you visit my shop sometime. Uh, Mark says uh, Bitcoin was started by the CIA. There is some speculation about that. Thanks for watching, Mark. Uh, Jiffy Pistol, stop saying the price has been reset when it hasn't. Not cool. Well, if you look at my title yesterday, sir, I did say that uh, U.S. reset price of gold, and they have twice, I believe, in history. Once it was uh, 30, what was it, 35 bucks an ounce, and they reset it to 42, 22 per ounce. So, um, no, the title was spot on yesterday. So, and again, remember what I said yesterday that in order to get views on YouTube, unfortunately, you have to create a grabby title. And uh, I spend a lot of time thinking of titles that are true. Uh, that are not uh, uh, clickbait, you know, because some, you know, you used to watch some videos, you watch a title, and then they, there's nothing mentioned about it, or that's totally different than what they said they were going to mention. So this is the thing I think that all YouTubers have to go through, and especially, you know, I got to do the same thing. I got to come up with good titles, uh, but I do make the effort to make sure the titles are true, and it was, sir, yesterday. Uh, they have reset the price twice already, and um, thanks for subscribing, Shane. I appreciate it. And D-Man says, in order to get 10,000 subscribers, I need to shorten my shows. Oh, man, that's like, that's like, geez, dude, I, I just yap. Sometimes I don't even think I want to do a show. I'm like, gosh, I'm, I hope I can get through this in five minutes. And the next thing you know, I've been yapping for 40 minutes. So it's <laughs> uh, just who I am. Thanks for watching, though, D-Man. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your concern about getting up subscribers. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. If I just stuck right where I'm at right today, I'm cool with it. You know, I'm doing this to create local business, not a national audience. Uh, and in fact, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. So, hey, uh, again, thanks for watching, sir. I appreciate it. Um, boost the dollar, man on Gahala. Hey, boost the dollar, but people sold government for 27, got screwed. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yesterday's video. Uh, uh, again, you know, FDR basically, when he. Uh, uh, told everyone to turn in their gold. He didn't say turn it in for free. He literally paid them more than the market value at the time. You know, market value on a $20 gold piece had less than an ounce was 20 bucks. He was paying people $20.67 or something like that. Uh, so it was appealing to some people. It's like, uh, it's like getting a shot for getting a lottery ticket or something. I guess. I don't know. It was appealing. I'm getting more. I'm getting something for free. Uh, and I guess that's what people felt at the time. And again, the, the, we still had gold certificates. The, the money was still backed by gold. Uh, so uh, people felt confident that the dollar was backed by gold. And then Nixon changed that in 72. Uh, long story. We've talked about it a hundred times. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. And uh, examiner uh, X Marine says the same thing. We've talked about this right here. Thanks for watching, sir. And Celtic Knot, uh, people are already silicone chipped. It's called a smartphone dummy. Yeah, yeah. there were some comments about uh, Silver Eagles having uh, chips in them. Completely untrue, folks. And there's not a remote bit of truth in that. Uh, so relax. There's no. For some of you folks out there, please relax. There's no chips in your, your Silver Eagles. Uh, and if you get one that you think has a chip, bring it into me. We'll do a whole video. We'll tear it apart piece by piece. We'll put it into every piece of machinery that I have, uh, and I'll find someone to see if it's uh, emitting any uh, uh, RF waves. <laughs> uh, but it's not, folks. It's not. Trust me. Uh, J4 says, uh, for an answer to your question, starting at Mark... Uh, 3040, uh, Mike Bologna, who really owns America's gold? Uh, again, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe I'll take a look at uh, Mike Malone's uh, video there when I get a, Mike Maloney, I'm sorry, uh, video if I get a chance. But uh, uh, yeah, we've uh, leased, uh, the Treasury Department has leased out gold to the uh, uh, Federal Reserve. And uh, where is the gold? And uh, that's exactly what I'd like to own, too. Uh, I think silver is in a narrow range because it's coiling to spring up higher than we've ever thought. I agree. I think we're going to be in that double up territory myself, sir. And uh, $50 is the unknown price, but once it gets in the $50 it hangs there, I think uh, the sky's the limit. But, uh, well, let me not say the sky's the limit, but, you know, I hate to throw numbers out there, but I could see $75 silver and I could see $100 silver. I think silver's been way underpriced for decades uh, and kept artificially priced by uh, uh, big short positions. And, uh, you know, there's many reasons why they, people would do that, I guess. Uh, again, let me move on from here. I'm sorry. 
Oh, gosh. Hey, thanks for watching ASMR people. I was slightly addicted with that. You people 33 to 20-something now. So, again, a little bit complicated here, and i got to move along. But I do appreciate uh, you watching there. And uh, Grant Coffee says, Mike Maloney just did a two-part episode on who, American, who owns America's gold. Hey, a second guy that mentioned that. Hey, I'd like to thank everybody for watching uh, yesterday's uh, video. And today, if you're still watching and you put up with me this long, uh, please hit that like button right there and subscribe button if you're a first time uh, a watcher. I really appreciate it as well. It lets me know that people are watching, which is the important thing to me. I like to know people are watching. Um, that's really about it. Best deals out there. Uh, if you're paying more than a $6 per ounce on any form of silver, I don't care how pretty it is, how much you like it, uh, you're paying too much. Uh, and in fact, I would rather see you pay 4 to $5 uh, over the price of silver uh, per ounce. You get it cheaper than that, great, great on you. I kind of doubt it you will, but if you can get it cheaper than 4 bucks an ounce, wonderful. Uh, but meanwhile, try to stick to that 4 to $5 range. Uh, a lot of the products in the 4 to $5 range is not sexy looking. It's not cool looking like silver eagles here or gold eagles or queen's bees or queen's knees or whatever they're called uh, <laughs> and, and koalas and stuff. But again, you're buying silver. You're just buying silver. Uh, keep that in mind when you're buying this stuff. Don't pay premiums for pretty. Trust me on this. And you won't get it back. Um, when you're selling into a uh, up market, you are not going to get any of that premium back. So all that premium you bought, you could have bought more silver with it. You're going to lose it. Um, and I'll, uh, anybody that wants to uh, tell me uh, contrary and commentary, I'll just tell you the same thing over and over. Uh, you're wasting your money buying big premium stuff. Uh, the problem right now with silver is getting good product. One ounce products are hard to get. Ten ounce products are hard to get. Um, uh, right now, uh, one of the big major dealers I know, he's got a backlog. He three months they're telling, possibly three months to deliver one ounce generic product. Uh, I thought this was going to lighten up, folks, and get easier, but it's not. Uh, there's some issues, real it's supply issues with uh, um, generic silver out there. Um, big supply issues. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Uh, and 100 uh, ounce bar seems to be the best deal out there also. I believe I can get you those for spot plus $4.25 an ounce still. And let's talk about gold real quick. If you're spending more than $100 per ounce on gold, any gold products, I don't care how pretty it is, you're overpaying. You're not doing yourself a service. Uh, stick with gold bars and cheaper gold coin products. If you, if you can buy them in that $60 to $85 range per ounce, you're doing okay. Um, gold seems to be a little bit more avail available than silver right now. So uh, uh, I think there's some stuff rumbling in the silver market out there. And there's some, uh, I think we're going to see much higher prices. We're going to need to. Uh, we're going to have to shake out the silver somehow because it's just getting harder to get. Uh, again, like I said, keep your uh, gold purchases. Don't pay more than $100 per ounce premium for anything. Um, and uh, try to keep it in that $60 to $80 range if you can. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rec Coins. One of the things I always tell you that I am a South Florida brick and mortar dealer here in, in the east coast of South Florida. I'm in Lauderdale by the sea. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. And uh, we don't do any online business. We don't ship or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're going to give me a call and ask me to ship you something, unfortunately we don't. But if you're ever in my area, again, we are here and we do direct uh, sales. And uh, you can come in, cash and carry uh, most precious metals up to 10 grand. Over 10 grand, we do checks only. Um, and if you can't come to my area, as you know, I always say, try to keep it local. Keep that money local. It's really important. Put your money where your heart is and buy local. Um, and if you don't have a dealer in your town, go to the county. And if you can't find someone in the county, make a drive. Go, you know, even if you have to drive an hour or two, you're going to need to develop a relationship with a good dealer somewhere. Because uh, even if you're not buying online, you got to sell at some point. And uh, trust me, you don't want to be shipping this stuff. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to try to get some fishing or something done in the water. Um, and uh, if you got any questions, call me between the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mondays through Fridays at 954-493-8811. Happy to help you out with any of your purchases and uh, any questions you may have. Hey, again, thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful weekend and uh, talk to you soon.